Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, joining me today. Uh, today, I will be speaking about uh, how I implemented a multi-branch pipeline uh, with Argo workflows and how I uh, debugged a, contri a small contribution that make it possible and uh, also uh, an open source project that came out of it. <clears throat> so a little bit about myself. My name is Gosha. I'm a senior DevOps engineer at Rookout. Uh, married and a uh, huge fan of hiking. So it uh, all started uh, when we uh, decided uh, to give our uh, developers the freedom on shifting left and uh, give them the ability uh, to choose which tools they want to use for our CICD pipeline. We are great believers on shifting left and on developers' uh, fr uh, f first approach. So uh, we decided to give the, our developers uh, all the freedom to decide which uh, CICD tools they want to use. Uh, at first, it was great. Everybody was very pleased of it. And over time, it became a huge mess. Uh, we had multiple of uh, uh, CICD platforms to manage the, the pipelines. And uh, over time, it's, it's became a huge mess. There was one service that actually started with Jenkins, then trigger cycle CI for tests, then waiting f uh, for it to end. And after all of that, actually uh, triggered uh, GitHub Actions just to create release notes. So uh, it was too much difficult to maintain the, it. And uh, it was very hard for new developers to, get to onboard quickly. And each time they needed to uh, do a huge reverse engineering of the pipeline just to find w where it defined. So uh, we decided to consolidate uh, our CICD uh, tools. You, uh, of course, already can guess which tool we have uh, chosen. But it wasn't that simple to choose which tool to use for our CICD pipelines. Uh, our developers had a lot of uh, experience with all those uh, uh, CICD tools, the expectation from new tool was very high, and of course, of course, uh, the requirements too. Uh, there's a lot of pros and cons for all, for each of those uh, CICD tools, and and the only uh, the, the only request that came from DevOps team is actually to make it a, a Kubernetes native tool to integrate uh, fully to our ecosystem. Uh, so there's not much plenty, there is not much uh, uh, Kubernetes native CI CD tools. So we started with Argo. Um, and this is how uh, my uh, journey as a, a developer experience product manager started. Actually, I, uh, I wanted to research how to research the developer experience. And I've read a lot of articles about how to do it. And all, all of them just talked about to, to get product market fit. So for me, actually, product market fit was happy developers. That was my metric. That's what I was uh, monitoring to, to see if I'm reaching this goal or not. Uh, so much before uh, implementing anything, I, I decided to use a Lean Software Development. It's actually an iterative process that uh, solving some optimi like it's a product optimization problem that you want actually to, to uh, put a least effort you can to get the maximum uh, uh, accuracy on your decision which CICD tool to use. So, uh, OK. So much before in implementing anything, I decided to uh, to uh, perform a quick demonstration to our, to our developers uh, with Argo uh, workflows and actually show them the UI, the usability of it, and how it's managed. And there was my first immediate uh, 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 feedback. Uh, it actually doesn't support multi-branch pipeline. So multi-branch pipeline actually very basic feature for CICD tools that uh, all of our different platforms, uh, Jenkins, Jenkins, Circle CI, GitHub Actions natively supports it. And uh, I use it too every day. And I was that much hypnotized from Argo, CD, Argo workflows that I didn't realize it's, it's missing a multi-branch pipeline. So uh, a little bit about, about what it is. 
So basically, a multi-branch pipeline gives you the ability to shift left and to manage the configuration of the pipeline on your source code repository. And even each of the, your branches going to have its own uh, pipeline configuration. So it makes it easier to maintain those pipelines because it's sandboxing them for each of the pipelines. And so you can uh, code review each other, run this pipeline much before uh, to test if it uh, works. So it's help the DevOps team too to maintain those pipelines. <coughs> uh, so my second iteration uh, was uh, actually to ask the developers how they use multi-branch pipeline. Even though it was widely used, they used a lot of different tools. Um, so I had m multiple interesting feedbacks, like they hate long YAMLs. Much of them perform, uh, uh, prefer uh, programming uh, interfaces. Other prefer declarative interfaces. Uh, and after a while, uh, back and forth, talking to the developers, Actually, uh, this was my uh, MVP for, for starting this project. Uh, actually, as you can see here, you, you see in, in the left side, you see the uh, .workflows folder. It's actually going to be the API of the multi branch pipeline with algo workflows that's going to have, at, at the start, a, a main YAML file, parameter file that's going to be global values, and template YAML actually just holds the templates, so it separates the long YAML to different YAMLs, and it makes it easier to maintain. <clears throat> so actually, what I wanted to, uh, to implement is that each of those branches in, in, in the source code repo are going to have those uh, folder in files. And the end goal was to create a, a CRD, a custom resource definition, at the Kubernetes cluster, where the Argo workflows control lives, and then he will do the heavy lifting for me. So for that, I choose uh, to use uh, Argo events. A quick explanation, not accurate at all, about Argo events. Uh, it's actually uh, one of the uh, Argo stack uh, tools that helps you to get a webhook and then create a, a custom resource definition. It's much more complicated than that, but actually the, it, it is the end goal of that. And so the webhook uh, passing through the sensor, that the sensor is going to create Argo, CD, uh, Argo workflow CRD. Uh, so how it works? Actually, from the source code repository, uh, a webhook sent to the, the repo sensor, then uh, uh, it will create a workflow CRD uh, that will manipulate the webhook uh, that we, we just got, then download the dot .workflow fol folder, uh, create a new uh, workflow out of that. So we need another sensor to listen for that. Uh, we call it seeder uh, sensor. It will seed our workflows. And then it will finally submit uh, this, the CRD that will represent the multi-branch pipeline in our uh, uh, workflow environment. So I started with, with, uh, with the last part of it, with the seeder. I was I, I wanted to check if it's work, so I just sent this small uh, webhook, and I wanted, uh, if you're not familiar with sensors, so I wanted to take a parameter, this the destination of it, and th this this is going to be the end goal of this destination. Actually, I wanted just to inject this, uh, uh, yeah, it's JSON, but convert to YAML, to the templates, so it will execute that. So. Uh, this the the workflow that will be created. That's what, what we expect in the end of it. So we got an unmarshalling error. Um, actually, uh, I hoped it will uh, go much smoothly, and then I decided uh, to debug this this uh, uh, sensor. And my easiest way for that was uh, to use uh, actually Rookout. This the string that I got with the unmarshalling error. So. It's definitely escaping problem of backslashes. So a little bit about Rookout. Uh, Rookout uh, gives you the ability to debug live uh, application in a production environment or remote environment without redeploying it, without uh, adding log lines, and then redeploying it again. So it, it's made easy for me to, to debug the sensor. So we wanted to place Rookout inside this sensor. Uh, for that, uh, a quick... Uh, Instrumentation needed, so um, 
at the entry point of the uh, sensors, I actually uh, put it our agent, and uh, I needed to uh, inject environment variables too. So actually, the, the Argo workflows, uh, Argo events controller, going to see the CRD, uh, deploy the, the new uh, sensor, and it's going to be uh, instrumented with your code inside, so it's easier for me to, uh, to find the bug. So um, I was I, I I knew what I'm looking for and where I need to look for it. So I just sent in this uh, webhook again, this payload again, and I found this one. This was the the troublemaker. So actually, it was my first contribution to open source, and uh, it was just to switch the the function. It said bytes to set raw bytes, little bit new tests, and that's it. And uh, here. This how a new feature at Argo Events came up. Like n now you can template the whole block and not only uh, one value of specific key. So uh, I was I tried it again, and uh, I got another error. Uh, I could template one block, but once I wanted to uh, to uh, template, uh, it's like actually in marshalling a whole struct uh, because of its substruct of uh, of a bigger struct, it actually uh, made it much uh, complicated to, co to contribution. So, so you can uh, uh, template a, a block, but not all the blocks. Uh, on on a, if you have a list of those structs, it's a problem. So uh, I came out with new uh, ar architecture for the Cedar pipeline. So actually, uh, it looks like this. So source code uh, repository will send the webhook to uh, uh, see their uh, sensor. This sensor will submit a workflow that's going, going to be called see their workflow. That this, this workflow actually will uh, download the dot workflows folder and uh, manipulate the CRD and then submit it by itself. So is the end goal of that. A little bit details about that. So the process began with the webhook again. And then we're going to have two sources uh, for for uh, our uh, workflow, actually a template of the workflow itself. It's not a workflow template CRD, but just a workflow CRD that have all the spec inside, all the uh, default configuration inside. And uh, the other source is actually the branch, uh, the branch where uh, that workflows folder lives, and the Cedar workflow actually will uh, fetch it to, to the workflow and create it. Then it will merge them together uh, it will take all the files and dot workflows, do all the logic, and inject them inside this workflow uh, template, and then, of course, submit it to the cluster, and this is how we're going to have this multi-branch pipeline. So back to our uh, interface to the, to the developers. Uh, so we had a dot workflows folder that I'm going to have main YAML, that actually the logic of the pipeline, it will uh, create a DAG inside of it, uh, the, the director of cyclic graph, a global parameters, and the template YAML that's going to uh, populate all the implementation of the steps that we will reference from the main YAML file. So how it works. So we have two sources. From your left, you can see the workflow CRD that will be populated and injected with all the uh, branch configuration with all these YAMLs. So we're starting with, me with metadata from Git, Git uh, webhook. We'll take from there the user, the repo name, the and other labels that we want to. And then we will inject the parameters YAML. It's actually a global, a workflow a scope parameters. Uh, create it, inject the templates into templates so we ca could be referenced. And actually, it's a local stop step. So nobody from other repos can't reference those templates. It lives only inside the repo itself, the in specific branch. So if you implement new template, you actually can reference it only from your branch. So it's nice to, uh, to sandbox it from other people. And uh, the main YAML, YAML is actually uh, the DAG uh, that will be created and will run, uh, will act as an entry point of all this uh, uh, workflow. <coughs> so here how it looks. Uh, actually, you have you can see uh, two workflows. The one called Cedar, the other called a uh, I don't know what the name of the repo is. Actually, the repo, then the branch, then some generated uh, string, and uh, 
this was my second iteration of implementation, and I give it to uh, to the developers to to use it. I got an, a lot of feedbacks about uh, uh, about this uh, 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 solution, and uh, one of them was uh, that it takes like 10 seconds and it's li li little bit messy. That you're not sure which seeder is a reference which workflow. So you you can imagine that we had here a lot of workarounds. And then we decided uh, to take uh, to take it further, and actually uh, we started a open source project that called uh, Piper. Uh, Piper will it's actually already have much simpler uh, uh, workflow. So the source code repo will send a webhook to Piper. Piper will actually get this webhook and then submit the workflow CRD. Uh, so it makes it much, much easier. Uh, for now, Piper supports uh, GitHub only. Sorry, guys, but I need to start with something. And uh, it it's now manages all the configuration, the webhook, the secrets, and so on, uh, just when you're providing the, the uh, token to it. And uh, it's actually we uh, expanded the interface, and now we have a trigger file. <coughs> that will actually reference all the triggers and all the, the YAMLs that we're going to use there. Uh, and we have a long, long, long roadmap. And of course, uh, that all of you are welcome to uh, use it and contribute to it. Um, here you can find the repo of it. Um, so if you want to scan, it's great. And we actually can. Uh, uh, create a quick demo of it. But, okay, I will come back to this QR later. So I will uh, make it. Okay, sorry. Okay, great. So actually, this is the trigger YAML file. We extended it. Now it actually will populate a list of the triggers that you want to trigger the uh, uh, inside any logic that you will place inside. So events going to to place uh, to hold all the. The list of the events that you want to uh, to execute the, tri the pipeline in it branches, of course, the, the branch that will trigger it. Uh, on start and on exit, actually going to be your uh, uh, entry point and uh, exit uh, handler for your uh, uh, workflow CRDs. So you can place a list of them. So uh, as we had the first feedback of long YAML, now we can separate those YAMLs to how, ma how many YAMLs you, you want and then reference from each other. Actually, it supports only DAG, and no, the, and we don't use steps at all. Uh, so if you want anything linear, just make it dependent to it in, on each other. And the template YAML that will uh, populate the templates on the workflow, and actually you can reference those things inside. So uh, I will trigger it. It's have a dummy uh, pipeline inside. So we send a webhook. And now we're expecting to see a workflow right here. Here is actually the workflow created. And it's running now in the cluster. It's actually in my local machine. Uh, and you can try to, to uh, you can try it locally too with make deploy. It will create a cluster with everything else with kind. And uh, that's it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> we have. Time we have, we have some time, some questions. If anyone wants, just raise Maybe. your hands and I'll bring the, I'll pass the microphone. Uh, just the a microphone. second, let's wait for the microphone hey, so hey. the okay. people on the recording can hear as well. Hi, uh, I wanted okay. to ask where does the Piper reside? Sorry? Where does the Piper sit? The Piper? The Piper actually a self-hosted application, so you, you will deploy it whenever the uh, Argo Workflows controller leaves. Uh, it will. It can communicate directly with workflow or create a CRD, uh, but actually you just want to place it 
uh, whenever we're, whenever the the workflows uh, he need to create CRD and the workflow need to to take this CRD and do the heavy lifting for it. Okay, so basically it sits where the Argo itself sits. Yes. In in the cluster. Yes, but but you you, you can you can configure it how you want. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my question is uh, regarding after the flow runs, how do you see the output in your Git repo uh, so that you don't have to every time visit Argo? Great. So actually, uh, one of the, uh, it's still a blank interface, but uh, uh, one of the features is actually to update the Git status when the workflow finish. It's go going to watch the, the CRD, and when it's updates, go take events from Kubernetes, and then update the Git with the API call. And that does it automatically, or you have to configure it? It will do it ent automatically. For now, we, I have like a, st a workflow step that's doing it, but uh, it's on development. Cool. Thank you. Questions, anyone? Now's the time. Questions? Yeah. Here we go. Can I replace the webhooks with other uh, inputs for the Argo event and uh, use the pipeline, uh, the Piper. Actually, now it it's will unmarshal payload that have specific uh, uh, fields. So actually, you can mock it and send it. Now we have interface only for uh, GitHub, but we can extend it to local Git or something else. OK, thank you. Any other questions, anyone? Okay, so thank you very much, and he's here if you want more questions there. Uh, thank you.